The show where aspiring voice actors, established VO pros, and curious fans alike get to meet and learn from the mega successful talent in voiceover. Hear their personal stories. Find out how they became so successful. Learn their secrets and join them at the top. Come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. Seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Welcome to a brand new episode of VO Buzz Weekly, everybody. We're so glad you're with us. Absolutely, we are. We hope you guys are having a great time out there, <laughs> we wherever are. you're at. We are. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Because we have Mary Elizabeth McGlynn on the show today. She is an incredible voice director, voice actor. You're going to love Absolutely. what she has to say. Tons of yes. awesome information. And I would just like to say this. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go please. ahead and do it right now. Mm -hmm. Take a break. It's free. And do it right now. Um, if you have, make sure you get all your friends to do it yes. and then send us an email letting us know that you did that. Yeah. And we might even send you some cash. Just kidding. No. All right. Or uh, it's just a heartfelt thank you. All yeah, right. A yeah. heartfelt thank you. Hey, it's worth <laughs> money. All right. We're going to Mary Elizabeth right now. Our guest is a respected voice director and award-winning voice actor loved for her work in projects like Ghost in the Shell and Steven Universe. She is also a flat-out fabulous singer-songwriter. Check it out. Oh, you need yes, to hear it. We're going to talk about that. And you know what? We're ready to get buzzed with the totally fabulous Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. Woo! How are yeah, you? I'm so baby. good. How yeah, are you? Good to baby. see you we again. We're getting buzzed, but there's no booze for the buzzing. All right. Yeah. Oh, there's booze in the buzzing. <laughs> we never reveal <laughs> what's in, in the, the mugs. People can put whatever they want in there. <sighs> So cool, man. Thank so, you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. We are so excited to have you, and thank you, because you're busy as heck. Yes. Yeah. And she just finished a gig, like, Ten seconds ago, <laughs> mm -hmm. ran Shot over, over here, here yeah. to do the show to give you guys a bunch right. of cool info. So thank mm -hmm. you for that. That's oh, really cool. My yeah. pleasure. Yeah. You have to work with hacks like Jess Harnell. Oh, oh gosh, boy. that must be hard. It's terrible. He's Mr. still one cutting his wonder. teeth, but you know he's he he's is. really coming along. I think he's, he's going to really do well. Yeah, someday. little by little. He's doing a little well. More training. I think, I think, it, I think things okay. are going to take off for him. I just have this feeling. He was very excited yesterday because Stacy sent him an email that he's now in the top 100 of the biggest selling movies. Like the top grossing. Movies, actors, yeah, wow. actors, yeah, and so he's on the list. And he's like, "Oh my God, I'm on the list!" Yeah, it's Jesse, Bob Bergen, Bill Farmer, Frank and Welker, Sam Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but it was cool to see. It was like, yeah, you know, we're kind of biased. I mean, yeah, with the uh, yeah. how can you not be? We love our VO people. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, but let's, today is uh, about you, Mary. Let's yeah, say. we um, want to ask you some questions and things that you know already. So no trickery. Exactly. Right. Um, so tell us a little bit maybe about like what you have going on right now, the stuff that maybe you can talk about. Okay, well, uh, we're just finishing up season one. Uh, I, I'm a director, too. And of uh, we're just finishing up season one of Tangled for Disney, which is really exciting. We got Beautiful. the whole cast back, uh, except for one actor. Um, and it's just been the most, it's like, I don't know if you guys ever, get into something where you just think, I don't know that I have a dream job, and I got this job, and I just thought, oh, this is my dream job. Wow. Like, I'd been, I've been doing anime for a long time, and yeah. directing anime for a long time. I directed Naruto for 10 years or so. Wow. And, um, and I got, I felt like I got kind of complacent, and I thought, you know, this is really easy. I've been coasting for a while, and I know the show really well. We were on episode 360-something, mm. and I just thought, well, what else do I want to do? I mean, what do I really want to do? And I had done a couple of original shows uh, for kids. Right. Uh, Gourmeti and the Lights of something, and uh, Wild Animal Babies. So they were uh, really tiny, cute, little, and another one called Boing, and they were adorable. But I really wanted to sink my teeth. I wanted to get back into cast records, and I wanted mm -hmm. to get back into uh, prelay animation. And uh, Sam Levine actually gave me the opportunity on Pen Zero Part Time Hero, and got to work with these amazing actors and Larry Wilmore and Thomas Middleditch, Adam Devine, and Alfred Molina. Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. And then so cool. I was doing a video game. I was singing a song for a new video game called Colot, and I had booked the session and. 
you know, Disney said, can you help us out with some auditions for this other show? And I was like, sure. Yeah. So I went and did the auditions and realized, oh, I'm helping them with Tangled. I had no idea. And then I went back to the studio, uh, to Studiopolis, and recorded the song mm -hmm. for the video game Colot. And then I got the call or the email saying, so we'd like you to direct a series. And at that Yay. point, I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my god. That's just a typical day in Mies Lake. <laughs> Oh, right. Have to pay Four thousand like, years later. I thought it was just Monday. Now Tuesday. Now Tuesday. <laughs> so I was hanging with George Clooney. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. In, in Italy or in uh, Studio City? Which, oh, Italy, of yeah. course, Lake Como. You know. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, no, it's just it's it's interesting that I really started to pursue it, and actually, it was Sam Regal. Uh, mm -hmm. who I directed years ago on the show, Gourmeti, and then he took off as uh, a director right. at yeah. Disney. Right. And he's the one who recommended me uh, for Pen Zero. So I pretty much owe everything uh, to Sam Regal, and the check is in the mail. Sam? Right. 10%? Good people. Sam Regal. Do we Regal's go up yeah. to 20? No, yeah. Yeah. I think it's 10. I <laughs> love that. Yeah. I love that. So in the meantime, I still get to do some voice acting, which mm -hmm. is great. Yeah. Uh, and I still get to do some singing, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. So when you see ADR director, and voice director. Yeah. Is there a difference? And if so, what is it or what's is there a skill set as the ADR director or a voice director that you need to have? Well, I I think the biggest thing of being a, a, a voice director is being able to talk to actors mm -hmm. and to be able to extract something. Like every actor has a key, and you've got to figure out what key that is to get a certain performance. And if right. you scare mm -hmm. them or intimidate them or uh, block them in any way, they'll shut down creatively. Anybody, anybody, right. it's it's will just shut down creatively. So you've I seen think that happen. I have. I have. You know, so you're you not get, the tough yeah. love. Uh, the tough no. love director. No, yeah. I'm. I think I'm just the opposite. I'm the. You're doing great. You're wonderful. <laughs> Brilliant, you know. And now do it better. Now yeah. let's try and suck less and move on. <laughs> now try you know. it my way. Yeah. <laughs> I try and instill as much comedy as possible. And yeah. I'm, I'm sort of a pop reference queen. I, I always throw in a reference to movies that I love um, all the time just because I have no original thoughts whatsoever. I'm sort of a base. I'm a Spielberg <laughs> baby and not actually. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, <gasps> right? No. Uh, but yeah, so I, I, I try and find a way to communicate to the actors. I studied acting for a long time. I, I got an MFA in acting from uh, Southern Methodist University in Texas, Meadow School of the Arts. And um, I never understood what they were trying to teach me mm -hmm. until I started voice directing. Like wow. I came out and I did, uh, I, I wanted to be on Star Trek really badly. Oh. So after grad school I came and I did a, a season at the Globe and I just thought, oh, I just want to go to LA and be on Star Trek, you know? And I was, which was great. And I was rescued by everyone, by like Chuck Norris and Scott Bakula so and cool. Lorenzo Lamas. And, uh, I was the queen of the battered woman. Like I yeah. played, I played the the and battered woman. And the costuming woman. is so great. Yeah, and it was so much fun. I got to sing with Scott Bakula on Quantum mm -hmm. Leap, and um, but then I was doing an episode of uh, Xena Warrior Princess. Uh, I was playing Pandora's granddaughter, and uh, she still had the box that her grandmother had opened. And uh, she had lines like, you have no idea what it's like to be cursed with this box. Which is not something I necessarily <laughs> want yeah, my mom to yeah, hear me yeah, say on right? TV. Yeah. Right. So, uh, but the horse I was being hanged on by the peasants, the peasants were revolting, and uh, reared up and fell on top of me and <gasps> dislocated my right kneecap. <sighs> And I came back home, and at the time I was working up at, I think, Universal Studios Hollywood in the Beetlejuice Rockin' Graveyard Review, and I couldn't do the show anymore because yeah. my knee was so messed yeah. up. So a friend recommended me to do voiceover, and I started doing that. And then a couple of years later, uh, the studio was so great. Yutaka Maseba and Kevin Seymour um, said, we have too many shows and not enough directors. And they were great advocates for women directors. They yeah. had a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Bridget Hoffman, Leah Sargent, uh, Wendy Lee. And these, these were strong, awesome directors. And I really learned how to do this from them and from yeah. Kevin Seymour. And when they said, we've got the show, check it out. It's called Cowboy Bebop. And I was like, OK. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I never looked back. I mm -hmm. was just like, I just want to do this. I finally understood That's cool, what man. they were trying to drill yeah. into me in Texas. Right, like, right. oh, I get it now. Right, right. So I felt like in the on-camera world, I never got a chance to really develop a character. They yeah. were so pressed for time. Yeah. They were like, oh, we're running behind. If you don't like what we're doing or what you're doing, then screw up. And then we'll, we'll do another take. But 
uh, and I, I just felt like that that wasn't for me. It mm -hmm. just wasn't. The minute I got into voiceover, I was like, oh, oh. I'm home. Oh, I'm home, and I love this That's world. So cool. The pureness, so much. yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's That's the greatest awesome. people. It's yeah. just, mm -hmm. I know. It's a really embrace, like the community yeah. just embraces you. I love that. You know, yes. there's, yeah. Uh, we yes. have shows like this to help yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Why do we do it? Why not? Because, because like we guys. can, and yeah. because you know it feels awesome. good. It feels good to help people and inspire yeah. people, and yeah. something you say. You have no idea. That yeah. could be a game changer for somebody yeah. watching who's either ready to get in or ready to get out. Yeah. And so that's powerful. It's great. Yeah. It's Absolutely. cool to be part of that. Yeah. So when you are doing ADR directing mm -hmm. yeah. versus like a scripted, whether it's a cast record or do you have a different approach or are there different things? I mean, obviously things are timed mm -hmm. um, and dubbing and all of that. So yeah. what's kind of your different hat that you put on for each case? You just kind of give us an idea, give people watching like, what is that? world look like? Yeah, well, ADR is fun. It's it's basically you're talking to a TV all day, and you're talking and watching a television while the actor is also in their booth talking to a television. And um, the base of it all is pure acting. That's it. No matter what you do, it's mm -hmm. all acting and character development. Um, and when we get the actors in the studio for ADR work, the script has been taken from translation and adapted to uh, the animation that we are dubbing at the time. Mm -hmm. And they do this in the on-camera world as well. If, mm -hmm. if it's raining or something you're, and you're recording in a studio with a tin roof, you've got to re-record everything. All mm -hmm. the James Bond movies are ADR'd. A lot of Star Wars, a lot of the Indiana Jones movies is mm -hmm. ADR'd. And uh, you basically go in and you're just replacing the dialogue that's there uh, for sound reasons or in terms of anime, yeah. it's uh, in for language. Right. And we go in and we get the actor and we do it line by line unless the actor's really good and with, there are some amazing ADR actors, a lot of amazing ADR actors, and we'll just show them the scenes. We'll set up the beeps and it's mm -hmm. three beeps, that fourth imaginary beep, you start talking and hopefully, I mean the key to all of it is really good writing. Right. You need a really good adapter to be able to right. take yeah. this stuff and make it fit so that you're not wasting time in the studio mm -hmm. rewriting mm -hmm. everything, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but when it comes down to it, it's, it's, I feel like it's harder sometimes to do ADR because you've got to do, really you have to do line by line by line. Yeah. And if it's a right. monologue that's set up over a certain period of time, you've got to connect to that thought all the way from the beginning to end. And what can happen is you get lost in the moment. You yeah. get fixated on the one line mm -hmm. and you realize, wait a minute, I've got a beginning and an end, a middle and an end mm -hmm. to this thing. So yeah. you've got to, as a director, it's almost like you're... You're, um, you're like the guide, you have to keep them mm -hmm. on the yeah. emotional track. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. like you're composing uh, or you're recording a, a symphony one instrument at a time. Yeah. yeah. Right? But so. you're not just getting a great take, it needs to also match what's on picture. Yeah. Right? right. So it's got yeah. to sync up with that. Yeah. So that's when we say thank God for great engineers. <laughs> I know, right? right? Yeah. So, and I've gotten pretty good at Pro Tools to be able to say, all right, let's. Let's vocal uh, line it. <laughs> let's compress it by four frames, slide it three frames left, and then snip off that end and put on the B take of, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And put it, so you end up Frank, I call it Frankensteining. Frankenstein. All these different <laughs> takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And if you've got time and money, it becomes a beautiful thing. Yeah. Cowboy Bebop, we had time, we had money. Mm -hmm. So we would have two weeks to record, we'd get them done in a week and a half, and then I would have three days to QC the whole thing, and it's three episodes. Yeah. So if I have, if anybody has that kind of luxury, right. you're gonna come up with a really superior product. Right. Absolutely. Um, that's not always the case. Yeah. So you've gotta be fast on the fly, you gotta find the key to that actor really quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, and get them comfortable and so they feel like they're a part of it and flowing and uh, a, a, a piece of this creative puzzle, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when you do the, uh, the prelay, I mean the, uh, yeah, the prelay stuff, if, if you're lucky, like the session I just did, it's full cast. Right, so you get this awesome. magic of a radio play yeah. happening at once, and you're like, okay, just do one as written so we make everybody happy, and then it's like, okay, play, develop these characters, dig deeper, find if you want to improv a little bit, mm -hmm. we're willing. And some of the producers, it's so nice, let us do that, which yeah. is great. Right, you don't right. use it all the time, but just being able to improv of together, course. 
instills Huge. this group of people with trust and with it deepens the characters. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's Not a really to mention, amazing it adds thing. a little bit of fun into the mix. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
anything else no, other than it's I mean, just like know. it's mm-hmm. water and oil. It's just not gonna, yeah. not gonna quit. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. you get a chance to move on to mm-hmm. the next. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't have you know because you know you have everything out there teaching you how to become a voice actor. Right? Yeah. There's many different resources, but th- you can't go anywhere to learn how to become a voice director. You know what I mean? No, you can sit in on sessions. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, but even those, if you don't know anybody, you know, yeah. Yeah. so it's kind of cool having somebody like you kind of give a little insight as to, you know, the process that maybe you have had to go through and still do yeah. sometimes to get certain jobs. Very, very cool. Yeah. So you get a gig. Mm-hmm. You you got the audition. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they really like you. They the like you and then. they like you. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is the process of a voice uh, director? Like, what do you have to do to make that show happen? On a database, you wake up, you have coffee, then what happens? Uh, I see myself, when it's a cast record, I am your tour guide for the day. I am the, the steerer of the ship. So I get in there with the script, and I've already mapped it out. We're going to start with, uh, we're going to take it. Some scenes are really long, like, and you really can't, the music stands are only so wide, mm-hmm. so you, I think three pages is about the limit of what you can do uh, comfortably without page noise and everything else. And it right. also gives you a, an idea of, of how much you can handle mentally all in one point right. or at one moment. So uh, so I'll just map it out. All right, we're going to take lines 1 through 15. Uh, here we go. We're rolling on take 1. I'll set the stage. If they're new characters, you establish the voice. You make sure the producers love the voices. Are we good to go? Okay, let's stumble through. And that's it. I mean, it's just we stumble through. We keep going. People screw up. It doesn't matter. You get people uh, associated with the lay of the land of right. that moment. And then you say, okay, tweaks, notes, let's go back. Everybody comfortable, everybody feeling, let's tweak this. Can you hit that word a little bit more? You guys are best friends. Let's hear it. Let's start to really develop that relationship between you guys. Mm-hmm. You hate them. Let's hear that underneath. Yeah. Don't play it too much. You know, so you just start to adjust the performances. So you really right? have to know the story. Like yeah. You need to know what's happening yeah. and what's yeah. going to happen. Because Cause you that. have all the pieces. You're, I mean... You're the you're the conductor of yes. the symphony, yeah. so it's like yeah. you you know the end goal, yeah. and you're trying to please these people on this side of the glass, and these you know. So yeah. you're really the. And I'm the interpreter. Some some producers say, "Do it," and then other producers are like, "Uh." I, and they're really, really, really are the hands on. Involved, yeah. In on the session, to yeah. yeah, 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 always, yeah. yeah. Okay, you're not all. Well, Anime, not so much. I was left alone on yeah. many a series yeah. uh, for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting. You you never become married to your own ideas right. because they're going to change. Yeah. And they're going to change when the actors get in the booth. And they're going to change when the producers are behind you going, can you get, I know that was a fun, funny thing, get it as written. And you're like, oh, that doesn't make sense, but you got it. Whatever yeah. you need, you, yeah, you know. Can't argue. You ABC that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Is Absolutely. There, is there like a like a daily goal that has to be like or not not go about maybe like a, a what is it a quota like certain <laughs> amount of work that has to yeah. be done that day in order to yeah. stay on. Well, like you've got deadlines. Yeah. 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 Like with ADR, Thank we you. try and do a certain number of loops per hour. We're mm-hmm. budgeted for that. We schedule around that. Um, if you get cast records. Uh, in a four-hour session, you're like, oh, if we can get through three episodes, that's amazing. And still have time for pickups or walla at the end, that would be great. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it's one episode for four hours. It really just depends on what you're doing. And sometimes you've got uh, an actor, and you do, like Tangled, we do mostly one actor at a time. Okay. Because there are a lot of uh, people's schedules are, are they're all over the place. Yeah. Right. So right. Uh, we do one actor at a time, and um, we say... Are the um, unbelievable casting people at Disney, uh, Julia Pleasant? Oh my gosh! All these people—they set out a full schedule of, this is what we'd like to do. We may not get to all of it. Let us know what we didn't get to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's my job to also keep the ship going. Yeah. Right? Like we can't just fart around all day long and talk about what was it like to be on Broadway. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, we've got to, you know, or how angry we are at the political yeah. scene these days. It's like right. we just. We've got to keep going, guys. We yeah. got to keep going. Yeah. And yeah. as so, and as a director, do you also get involved in part of the casting for that, or is that is that a whole different? Sometimes, sometimes I, I'll give suggestions sometimes, but like like would they ask you, hey, what do you think? Be, you know, we're thinking, what do you think? Yeah. Do you, they ask yes. If they asked me, then I would definitely and on, pick him. No. On one <laughs> show, I was just like, I had actually recorded a role and. Uh, 
they decided uh, to go a different way. And uh, so they decided it wanted to be uh, a man. And uh, so we kept throwing out suggestions, throwing out suggestions. And then I watched something and I was like, well, what about her? She's really old now, but she's a legend. And don't you, just what about her? And I'll just throw out stuff all the time. Right. You know, it's right. just like we get some character, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Ian McShane would be great for that. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can't get Ian McShane. Yeah. <laughs> But what? I'll always throw things out for fun, and sometimes you get them. And in this one instance, I recast myself with the person that I suggested, which was mm -hmm. great and yeah. wonderful. That's cool. Yeah, but yeah. most of the time, I rely on really good casting directors yeah. because that, I think, is one of the most underrated, underappreciated jobs in this industry. Yeah. I oh. did a pilot season with Jill Anthony Thomas, and I was blown away at how people treated casting directors. Really? If, if things went right, they never got credit. And if things went wrong, all the blame piled Whoa. on them. It was amazing. And the amount of work that they do, they go yeah. through hundreds and hundreds of auditions. Yeah. And voiceover is the same, at least, you know, you get to look at actors or get to read with actors on, on camera. With VO, they just send you auditions and you right. listen and you listen and you yeah. listen. And after a while, it's like, this is not English anymore. I'm not listening yeah. to English. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to give a huge thank you to all mm -hmm. casting directors out there. And because not everybody absolutely. can do it. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm not made for that at all. You know? Like, I'm doing this one gig now where I have to actually do some sort of organizational skills <laughs> about things and booking people. And yeah. my it's calculus. It's calculus to my brain. <laughs> I cannot get it right. And I'm trying so hard. What about? You can't be good at everything. <laughs> no. here's, new, here's a good one for you. This has probably Just... never happened to you. Well, uh, what about, so the show's casted mm -hmm. and you're working and blah, blah. Have you ever had a situation where somebody had to be recasted because they weren't cutting it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, so let me ask you something. What would need to happen for somebody to get recast? Like, what what would make it so that is it because just the sound or acting? Sometimes it's just not landing. Sometimes the performance is everything around them is so strong and mm -hmm. and so strongly set into one specific world. Yeah, and they just happen to be performing in a different setting. Yeah. So uh, would, would that would that be maybe like a newer person? Or? No, some of the new people are amazing. Most of them. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's. Um, Sometimes it's just you get a vision in your head of wouldn't it be wonderful and they get in there and for some reason they get behind the mic and it just doesn't click. And you can't predict when that's going to happen. Right. You mm -hmm. can't control it. It just happens sometimes. And are you the bear of that news? I have been the bearer. Mm. <laughs> and that sucks. Do you do it's it over like, coffee, dinner, yeah. lunch? I've done it in the middle of a session. Oh, no! The Here's a like, cookie. Get your coat. Wow. It's just like, you know, we just feel like it's. Yeah. Uh, we need to take this in another direction and it's awful it's all bullshit too I mean, yeah. you just you're just like hi you know you're wonderful and we love you and it's not you're breaking up with someone it's you know not it's you not you me. it's us yeah. and yeah. it's a different vision and all this mm -hmm. bullshit and you can't make it any easier and you can't make them feel any better it's yeah. just right. right it's it sucks it sucks wow yeah. i'm glad that we got to talk um, about that Hey, that concludes part one with Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. We're going to be back next week with part two, so join us. Yes, we will. And in the meantime, keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to check us out on iTunes. You can drive and listen and then Heck watch yeah. the video later. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. buzz. Come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. Neo Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demos That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.